Hi everyone, my name's Ashley, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about my book buying problem because I have a problem with buying books and I tend to just buy books that are pretty and that I think I will like and then I don't end up liking them and it makes me sad. So today I am getting rid of those books and unhauling them. Unhaulings have become very popular on booktube recently, I think because we all recognise that we all have book buying problems and getting rid of books is kind of cathartic, it just gets rid of all the negativity on your shelf and makes you feel better and it makes you feel like you have less of a problem. Anyway, I have a ton of different books to unhaul today. Oh, I should probably also preface this video by saying that if I get rid of your favourite book, it's not a reflection on you. I just didn't like it. We're all entitled to our own opinion. We're, for the most part, all adults, or at least we're all mature. So, no hate. Come on, guys. We love each other. Love each other. So, I'm going to start with the biggest pile, which is books that are going back to my parents' bookshelf downstairs. So, they're books that I've had on my own bookshelf, and then now I've decided that maybe I don't actually want them. The first one is The Artemis Fowl Files by Ewan Colfer. Um, this book I think my auntie got for my brother for his birthday a couple of years back, and he was not a reader, so he never read it. So I was like, I'll take it. And then I never read the Artemis Fowl series, and I don't really feel like it, so... It's going back downstairs. Maybe I'll just get rid of it. I don't know. We'll see. Next we have Bridget Jones's Diary and Bridget Jones' The Edge of Reason. I thought I would like these because I really like the movies, but it turns out these books are really bad and I hated them. And so I'm going to just put them back downstairs on my mum's shelf where they came from. I have Emily Rudder's The Ghost of Raven Hill. Next I have 1,000 and One Cool Jokes and 1,000 and One Schoolyard Jokes. These are great for kids and my mum's always banging on about having stuff for the grandkids. She's kept the baby borns that I haven't used since I was 12 in the cupboard under the stairs ready for her grandchildren that are just not even being thought of yet. So here you go mum, these are for your grandkids. Next I have the two Kathy Wright books that we have in our collection and they are Bones to Ashes and Monday Morning. My mum, where my mum used to work, they sort of had a bookshelf where you could go in and you could take a book in and then you could exchange it for another book. Book exchange, that's what it's called. These were two that she got from there and I am into forensics and stuff like that and I really like the TV show Bones so I thought I would enjoy these and I just couldn't get into them, I just didn't like them. I don't know what's going on but I'm never going to read these so they can go back downstairs to my mum's stuff. Um, I have another couple of books now. The Case of the Marmalade Cat by James Hennigan. I have the Book of Great One Liners which is my dad's and I don't think he's ever read it but I've looked through it and it's not something that I'm gonna keep so downstairs it goes. And I have A British to Wiseman's Cove by James Maloney. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to read this in year 8 for our Australian, Australian Literature module in English uh, during which I read Blueback by Tim Winton, but I don't think I ever did pick this one up and I don't think I am ever going to. Last, I have The Magician Series by Raymond E. Feist. Don't know what order they go in. I don't have room for them on my shelves. And they're my mum's anyway, so I'll just give them back to her. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh, sorry. And then I've got two non-fiction. I've got The Atlas of Natural Wonders by Rupert O. Matthews. I'm not interested. And I've also got IQ Workout and this is very dated and I've already done it like 10,000 times. Now I'm going on to two smaller sections. Um, this first one is foreign language and basically I picked one of them's a dictionary and then I picked the other three up at a book sale at uni, um, back in my first semester of French, and I was like, yeah, one day we will read these, and yeah, I'm not doing French anymore, and I'm got no interest in reading them. So, I have Le Rouge et Le Noir by um, Henri Martineau. 
Um, I don't even know. It doesn't even have like a synopsis on the back. Like it's just so white like, cover. It does have an inscription though. Nope, that's who owns it. Okay. I have Le Mies de la Jonqui um, by Alain Corbin and this has a synopsis on the back but I don't know what it's about, it's all in French. Um, I have my original French English dictionary, this is the first one that I owned um, and I took it to all my classes and then one day for a test, I left it at home and I had to go buy another one from the bookshop at uni, um, which was like a thousand times better, so I'm, I've been using that one ever since, and this one I'm not going to use, but someone might, someone might use it, so I'm going to donate it. I'm actually going to donate all of these that I'm getting rid of to my local good Sammies. They'll be long gone by the time you watch this, so don't, don't even ask for them. And the last one, um, for foreign language is La Sasson. A Beat à la Maison by Jessie Pritchard Hunter. I actually think this was originally in English and was translated to French because she lives in New Jersey. But like, I'm not, I'm not gonna read it. Okay, and then the second small section is for books that I still own but in a different edition. And the first one is Siren by Angie Sage. This is the first, fifth, fifth book in the Septimus Heap series. Um, I had them all in paperback and when I bought this one I just really wanted to read it and my school library didn't have it yet. Um, so I was just like, I'll just buy it in hardback. And then last year I was like, I'm gonna buy the rest of them in paperback and they still don't match the rest of them. And that made me really sad, but at least it was a bit more matching than it was. So yeah, someone will read it. Um, next is Charlie Bone and the Wilderness Wolf by Jenny Nimmo. This is book six in the Children of the Red King series. I have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I have, see, what's my hair doing? See up here I have all my red classic ones. I have this in that and it's also got the second one. Um, so I do not need this one anymore. I have The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. This one I wanted in a different edition. I ordered the more expensive edition and they sent me this one. I was really sad, um, so I had this one. And I ended up getting a different edition still, um, which I like better than this one, so I'm getting rid of this one. Bye bye! Bye! And I have The Hobbit and I also think I have a The Lord of the Rings that I'm getting rid of. Um, I think these ones are going back to my parents as well, but I have my own editions of these. The second last section is books that I don't exactly know why I bought, but it's probably got something to do with the fact that they were in a book sale. The first one is Crime School by Carol O'Connell. I think this is part of a series, um, but I am not gonna read it. Um, I have Letters of a Portuguese Nun by Miriam Sear. Again, book sale. I was gonna read it, it's got deckled edges which is really cool and yeah I thought I was gonna like it and then now I'm just like I'm not gonna read that. I have King Arthur's Bones which I think is like a set of different like mysteries. Maybe I will read it. No! No! I'm not gonna read this, I'm gonna give it away. Bye. I have Book of Dreams by Tracy Harding. Again, I think this is part of a series. It looked good. I got it in the book sale and then I was just like, no. Oh. Just for context, this book sale was like three years ago, so. I have Legend of a Suicide by David Van. Prince of the Clouds by Gianni Riotta. The Brothers book by Susan Johnson. And these are all books that I was like, oh yeah, I'll read those. And now I'm just like, yeah, no, I'm not going to read those. Um, this one I didn't buy. And I was given it. No, I stole it. No. Um, no, this one I was walking on campus one day. It was 2012. And these people were just giving out, like, books with CDs. And it's... Too Far by Rich Shapiro, and this actually has good re reviews on Goodreads, um, and a lot of people were saying that they were giving it out for free, so, and they're like all over the world, so I don't know what's going on here, but I just, I, I'm not gonna read this, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not gonna happen.
Um, this one I got at that book sale three years ago and I didn't realise it was the second in a series. Um, and that is Gorman Garth by Mervyn Peake and like I like my books to be matching. So even this is a, even this is a beautiful edition. I haven't been able to find the first and third books in the same edition. Um, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. This book I got from Melbourne in 2012 and it was at a five dollar book sale in Harbour Town and I was like no no I can't buy books I'm gonna go over my baggage limit and I bought books anyway and I didn't go over my baggage limit which was like mint but um I got the starter's guide to cryptic crosswords because I like crosswords I freaking love crosswords I love doing crosswords I love like how it expands my vocabulary, but I hate cryptic crosswords. I could never do them. I still can't do them. And I thought this starter guide to um, cryptic crosswords will be great. And I have never picked it up. So there is literally no point in me having it. I'm gonna give it away. Okay, and now we're up to the biggest pile. And my favorite pile, the books that I hated. Yay. Whoop, whoop. Um, first up we have Here Lies Bridget by Paige Harbison and I think I bought this one in 2012 and I was like that seems cool. It's got a nice cover but I thought this was gonna be a really good book and I read the first chapter and I was like I hate this bitch. And so I put it down. Never gonna pick it back up. Um, I didn't hate this one particularly but I've read it twice and I'm not gonna read it again and that is Legally Blonde by Amanda Brown. It's not the movie. That's really all I can say. The only thing that's similar is two of the characters' names and everything else is completely different. Skip the book, you don't need it. The movie and the musical are better. When I studied at ECU, I uh, wrote for the ECU magazine, the Guild magazine at the time, GSM, um, which is defunct now, that's a bit sad. Um, but I reviewed for them. I did get three books and two of them I did not like. So, so, here we go. Um, as a side note, the third one is actually one of my favourite books. So, The Nightmare by Lars Kepler. Um, Lars Kepler is actually, um, a pen name for an author couple duo or something. Um, and this is a second book in a series. It's Swedish. Um, and I didn't like it. I'm maybe I could have liked it more if it was if I'd read the first one. Um, but I just I didn't like anything about it, and I'm not sure if it was because I didn't have context. It literally I didn't even finish this one. It took me about a hundred pages to realize that this was a sequel. Um, it's a thriller mystery thing, and I did not like it. So. The other one I got that I hated was The Chemistry of Tears by Peter Carey. And this one, the writing was nice, but there was no plot. I mean, the cover's okay, but it's got a stupid premise. And like, even though the writing was beautiful, it just... Oh, did I think the writing was beautiful? I just opened it up and... <laughs> this is a female narration. She, in turn, admired my silk pants. I would have expected her slony aesthetic would have made her blind to such things as are produced in the Rue de Pré au Claire, so I was rather pleased. I then took her to the far end of the studio, right up against the washroom, furthest from the damaged hull. I, it was too late, of course, but I did not know that yet. I hated this book. Let's just leave it at that. Um, next we have Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, which I started reading in December, and I... Oh, it's still got a bookmark in there. I got up to page 54, and I'm just like, nope. Oh, I'm gonna take that back. The next two might get me a bit of hate, but you know what? I don't care. Um, they are The Red Pyramid and The Throne of Fire by Rick Ryan. Not only do they not match, but I did not like these. Um, I picked up The Throne of Fire, whoo, 2012. I soon realised that it was a sequel, so I sh posted about it on Facebook, and someone I knew was like, I have the first one, you can have it, that should have been my first, heads up. Um, and so I was like, yeah, sure, thanks, and I started reading it, and I was just like, oh my god, I do not like this one. I don't even know why, I like mythology, and I like Rick Riordan, and I just, mm, 
No, I didn't like these. I have a Discovery of Witches. This is another one that I read in 2012 and I liked it at the time, but then reflecting on it afterwards, after it finished, I was like, mm, yeah, there's actually no plot there. Or there was a plot, but it was just like the start of a plot and multi-book plots are terrible. Like an overarching plot where each book has a different and distinct plot is fine, but having a whole plot over three books is just a little excessive, especially when the books are this long. So I didn't like it and I am not going to continue the series. Next has the first two books in a series that I started reading last year and that is Talon and Rogue by Julie Kagawa and these are the first two books in the Talon saga. I believe Soldier is out now. I may read it because I'm trash, but I, ooh, oh man, I hated these, and I hated them, and did I mention I hated them? Because I hated them. They're just bad. There's no other way to put it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's cathartic to get all the negativeness off of your shelves, and so that is what I'm doing by saying goodbye to these. The covers are nice though, the covers are so, so nice, like dragon scales, like if I didn't hate them so much I might actually keep them just because of the aesthetic. And then the last book, which I'm sure none of you are going to be surprised at, and that is Kimberly's Capital Punishment by Richard Millward. I've spoken a lot on my channel about how much I have hated this book so I'm not going to bore you with it again, but my recommendation is even though the premise looks nice do not pick this up stay away from it it's terrible goodbye